Today we're going to do a sensor replacement on this 2011 Toyota Corolla. One of the first steps that we do is a test before touch. And why we do a test before touch is we want to verify to see if all four sensors are functioning. We want to see if it's a low tire pressure issue or if it's a broken or malfunctioning sensor. The customer came in with a TPMS issue because the TPMS light or telltale was either solid or flashing. A solid light indicates a low tire and a flashing light indicates a system malfunction. I will now show you what a test before touch procedure looks like. Test before touch will allow me to tell the customer what their specific TPMS issue is. The test before touch showed that the right front sensor is malfunctioning. That's why the flashing light on the dash is on. I'm now going to bring that vehicle in and replace that right front sensor with an easy sensor. This is the Tech 400 SD. We're going to use this tool to program the easy sensor and I will show you the steps using this tool. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to turn the tool on by pressing the on button. It defaults us to select by vehicle make. So we're going to hit return and now we're going to select a Toyota Corolla by using the arrow keys the down arrow key or the up arrow key to find Toyota. Return. I'm going to select Corolla. Return. It's a USA made. Return. What this screen tells you is a multitude of things. It tells us that it is the, the OE sensor is a Pacific sensor. It tells us what the OEM part number is. It tells us that it's easy sensor supported. It tells us that this vehicle is supported by comms and what comms is is we can read the IDs through the OBD connector or we can write the IDs via the OBD connector or we can see if there's any technical service bulletins out on this vehicle. It also tells us what the relearn procedure is and I'm going ahead and hit return and it will tell us what the relearn procedure is. We're now ready to start the test before you touch. We start at the left front tire. After we test that, it's going to automatically scroll to the right front tire. It's going to, auto once we test that sensor, it's going to the right rear tire and then to the left rear tire. As you can see, the left front tire is showing 32 PSI and it also shows me that the sensor ID. The right front tire shows an X. The X means the sensor is mechanically broken or electronically non-functional. Now that I know that the right front sensor is faulty, next I'll get the vehicle on the lift, remove the faulty sensor, program an easy sensor, install the tire back to the vehicle, I'll do a relearn procedure, and the customer will drive away with a properly serviced TPMS system. All right. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to take the core out, the valve core. We're going to dispose of it. As that's leaking down, we're going to take the nut off, drop the sensor inside the wheel. We're going to dispose of the aluminum nut. As you can see, the sensor is now inside the tire. I'm going to break the bead with my valve at the 12 o'clock position, valve hole at the 12 o'clock position. I'm going to get both sides, so my valve's now at the 6 o'clock position, valve hole's at the 6 o'clock position. Break the back side, keeping the valve at the 6 o'clock position, valve hole at the 6 o'clock position. Now the valve hole's at the 12 o'clock position. 
Gonna remove my tire weights, my wheel weights. Putting the tire up onto the changer. Making sure that everything's locked into place. All the way around. I'm gonna lube up my tire, bring my valve hole so it's directly underneath the duck head. From, from this location, this is where you want the valve hole to be. Or if there was a sensor there, that's where you'd want the sensor to be. I'm gonna bring in my lever, lever this up and over, bring the tire around. The valve hole wants to be in this same position for the bottom bead. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the bottom bead. If we look, we can see that there's our faulty sensor. Now that I've removed the faulty sensor from the rim, I'm going to program an easy sensor. I'm going to turn the tool on, select vehicle, Toyota, Corolla, 2011. I'm going to go through the relearn, tell me how to relearn it. I'm going to move my arrow key to the easy sensor option. I'm going to create a right front. Once again, I'm going to create, not copy, but I'm going to create a right front sensor. Right here, the screen tells me what sensor to get, whether it's the black sensor or the gray sensor. The black sensor being the 315, the gray sensor being the 433. This one says place the black easy sensor into the programming fixture, press enter to program or escape to cancel. Here's my sensor. I'm going to put it into the sensor slot. I'm going to hit return to program. As you can see, the scroll bar scrolling across the bottom of the screen indicates that the sensor is being programmed. Program successful. I'm going to escape and take me right back to this home screen. I'm now ready to install the easy sensor into the rim. Installing a sensor, a snap-in sensor, is relatively easy, but there are some important steps that you need to follow. First step, you always want to pre-lube the valve. You're going to install the sensor so that the barcode side is facing down, not up, but down. I'm going to take a valve puller and a block of wood or rubber, my assist device, to help pull my valve parallel through the valve hole. Lock device, so everything's nice and in line and it pops in place. You'll feel it pop. I'm going to take my tire, I'm going to lube my tire, bring my duck head in place, mount dismount head, bring my tire around so that the traction point where the tire meets the rim is called your traction point so that the sensor is just ahead of the traction point. As you can see on the bottom side that this, the sensor is nowhere near the tire. Bring the sensor back around to do the bottom bead. Next step we're going to do is we're going to take the core out before we inflate the tire. Put it someplace safe. Okay, I'm going to go in to release the clamps. Okay, and a couple pops. There's one, there's two. 32 PSI. Grab my core back, hold it in my finger. 
go until it clicks. This is my core torquing tool. One click, I know it's tight. I'm gonna put my valve cap back on. And this tire is ready to be installed back onto the vehicle. That's that. We're going to lower the vehicle down, torque the lug nuts, and then relearn the vehicle with our new sensor that we just installed. We're going to bring the vehicle just before it touches. I have my wheel chalk that I use. I'm going to grab my torque wrench. All right, I'm going to set my torque wrench to the proper torque. Okay, right there is 76. I'm going to go through a start pattern starting at the top. and then verifying that I hit all five by going in a clockwise rotation. And that's that vehicle secured. I will put my hubcap back on and lower the vehicle all the way to the ground, removing my vehicle lift arms. We will relearn the vehicle with the new Easy Sensor installed. Now I'll look up the relearn procedure for this 2011 Toyota Corolla. To start the relearn procedure, I've already selected on my tool my make, model, and year of the vehicle, the Toyota Corolla 2011. I've, I'm at the left front position. I'm going to capture all four IDs on my tool starting at the left front. It's imperative that we start at the left front because when you put the vehicle into learn mode or you write the IDs, it will put the IDs as left front, right front, right rear, left rear, every single time. So starting at the left front, I'm going to hold my tool, test the sensor, pressing the test button, waiting to get a response back. The beeping indicates that the tire is at 34 PSI. Following the correct order, I'll test the remaining sensors. After reading all four IDs, the tool automatically moved to the vehicle comms box. At that box, you hit return and it gives you three options. First option being vehicle communications, relearn information, and technical services bulletin. What we want to do today is vehicle communications. So I'm going to connect my cable to the bottom of the tool. On the vehicle, there is an OBD compartment. You open up that compartment, you connect the other end of your cable to the OBD connector. Make sure it's on. Turn your key to the on position. On the tool, select vehicle communications. There's four options on this screen. First option are write IDs to the vehicle. Second option, read IDs from the vehicle. The third option, read vehicle's DTCs. And the fourth option is reset the ECU. I'm gonna go with the first option. I'm going to write the IDs to the vehicle. And now it's in the process of writing the four IDs, the four TPMS IDs, to the vehicle. IDs were successfully written. After you've successfully written the IDs, the TPMS light will flash on the dash until the ECU receives a signal from each sensor. To speed this process up, you can walk around the vehicle and activate each sensor. Let's recap what we've done today. We had a customer come in with a TPMS issue. 
We did a test before touch audit and realized that the right front sensor was a malfunctioning sensor. We brought the vehicle in, we put it up on our hoist, we took the tire off, we replaced it with an easy sensor. We looked up the relearn procedure, we captured the four IDs, we wrote the four IDs to the computer's ECU via the OBD. Now the job is complete. The customer will drive away with a properly working TPMS system.